Hi Matadors, I'm Ariana Takis and you're watching The Brief. This week we have ice hockey, boxing and men's and women's soccer. For ice hockey, CSUN played the California University Lutheran Knights and it was a blowout. Here's James with more. Calhoun got the game started with big hits and a hard four check that caused trouble for CSUN in their defensive zone. A turnover there would lead to a chance. Fortunately, the goalie made the stop and the score would remain 0-0. CSUN started to get some blue collar work going in the corners and started to put pucks to the net of their own. Soon enough, Cal Lutheran's four check overpowered CSUN's defensive core. With Bam! Putting him into the corner there probably should have been a boarding penalty, but Puck would get turned over right in the slot and a nice feed to the middle. Boom! Top shelf with a stylish finish by the Knights. Score would be 1-0 at the end of that goal. One-handed sweep into the center and CSUN would answer right back, right thus after, and it is now 1-1. Both these teams would score twice more before the, or once more before the period would end, and this would be the second period where CSUN came out blasting very staunch on getting the tempo set in their favor and it would be right on. The Cal Luther or the Knights got caught in a bad change, breakaway pass five hole and that would be the lead in the second period. CSUN did nothing but score goal after goal after goal. Another chance here would get stopped but it would not be over yet for the CSUN Matadors. Turnover in the neutral zone would give it to Andy Manessi who go outside, inside, back into the far post, tucked it home, and that would be 4-2 on one of the nicest goals of the game. Cal Lutheran began to get frustrated and ended up taking a penalty, and CSUN wasted no time getting it to the point, blasting it off the end boards and up into the top shelf would be the 4-2 lead, or the 5-2 lead. Now CSUN would move it on up to Carcerano, Carcerano inside, outside, boom, a couple of dukes there would go to the backhand sauce, putting it into the middle, and the finish, thank you very much, and that would be the end of the third period, four goals in there to make it 6-2. to two. Kalu would come out sniping to get it started for the third, and that would be the last goal they would score in this particular game until the near the end of the third where CSUN got back to back to back goals scoring once, twice, and three more times. And the next game would end nine to three. At the end of the game I wanted to know who had the best goal, so I spoke with the players on the team. Who had the best goal tonight? Oh damn, uh, best goal there was you got a lot to choose from. Uh, there was a lot, but I think it was good to see uh, Tyler pick up his first goal. He's a rookie on the team, so Andy Manessi. I don't know. Andy's was pretty sick. Brian's uh, Brian's dish to Alex, I think it was, uh, or Ellis right here. We'll give it to Ellis off of Brian's like six, seven, eight moves that he made to happen. So I call that Brian's goal, but Ellis finished it. Uh, you know, tonight's best goal was Alex Rance on the power play. Puck bounced off the boards. He was literally on the goal line and just batted out of the air up top. I'm going to go with Matt Alessi. I think uh, him having a two-goal game was uh, pretty sick. I think I'm going to go with Matt Alessi. He, he had a big game for us. He scored two goals. Uh, one of them being top shelf is pretty nice and uh, gave us some momentum. Boxing fought in San Francisco University's Hilltop Cup. CSUN sent two fighters, Macario Del Castilla and Terrence Harris. I'm James Jewett from Matador Sports Network and I'm here with team president Macario Del Castillo and national champion Terrence Harris. So guys, you fought in the Hilton Cup over the weekend in San Francisco. Tell me how your fights went. This, so this is round one and, uh, and I was really trying to establish a, de a jab, a solid jab. I hit him with that, that left straight and uh, for after that left straight he just started backing up. He talked to me at the end of the fight and said that he didn't want to see the power on the inside because of that, that one punch that, he, that had hit him. So for most of the fight, he's going to back up. So there it is again, another straight left. What did Coach say to you in the corner between rounds? He said, he said to cut him off like a, you know, something, uh, something that I've noticed for my past few fights that I should be working on cutting off the ring. And uh, after this fight, for sure, this is my next step, you know. I, I was trying to get into the rhythm of things again, but now, now that I see it, and now it's more, more I have more awareness on it, uh, of it. I want, I'm, I'm going to make a conscious effort of, of putting work towards cutting off the ring. Did you 
right, right, right. I, I lost this by points. It, I, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure how they counted the points, but I lost, I lost by points. But there's, there's an always solid right hand right there. At this moment, I think he know he messed up. <laughs> um, you know, pretty much the game plan because he was moving around was just uh, attack the body, not too close to fight inside, but you know, be very technical and uh, just jab into the body to make sure and try to hopefully uh, bait him to counter punch against him. As you can tell, many times that many of his punches that he's throwing, they're not really hitting me. You know. As he is busy, you know, and amateur boxing is about who's who's busy, who's throwing more punches. Um, it's not so much about the accuracy and the percentage of the punches, but as you look at it, many of these punches are not very clean. But I will give him this, he was very busy. Right here at the moment, he wasn't really doing much work on it, but he's, you know, putting a lot of his body on me. In uh, amateur boxing, that alone, you know, drains the energy of your opponent. So that was kind of a smart edge he used. Nice. Did um, you win? No, I actually ended up losing. Um, can't really speak on the reason yeah. why, but it was a good fight. For men's soccer, the A team lost against UC Santa Barbara. Here's Diego with more. Hey, Mad Doors. My name is Diego Dragado from Mad Doors Sports Network. Today, men's soccer A team took on UC Santa Barbara here at the SRC turf field. Here's how the game went down. Today's matchup was difficult to watch, to say the least. During the first half of the game, UC Santa Barbara and CSUN had plenty of goal scoring opportunities. In this play, CSUN had the momentum but failed on the delivery. After that play, CSUN failed to capitalize on the corner kick attempt. UC Santa Barbara could have dominated CSUN's goalie with back-to-back -back goal attempts. The second half of the game started in CSUN's favor after one of Santa Barbara's players received a yellow card after fouling CSUN's defender, Justin Gumilia. CSUN had a solid goal attempt near the end of the second half, but fell short yet again. Unfortunately, UC Santa Barbara slipped through CSUN's defense and scored the winning goal of the game. Within the last few seconds of the game, one of CSUN's forwards, number 24, received a red card after an alleged holding call. CSUN's head coach, Mike Walter, spoke with me after the game. Um, it's really all about mental preparation. This is a sports psychology issue now at this point. Um, they demonstrated on the field today that they have the skills to do everything that they need to uh, control the pace of the game and to make the connections needed. We just we can't put the ball back in the net, and the only thing that's stopping us from doing that at this point is our head. Well, we ha we have a bit of a card issue. Um, you know, you can't always have refs that are going to be on your side, and it's super duper easy to go and just blame a ref for a poor game. But at the end of the day, we, we need to be able to keep our head. We need to be able to keep our cool and. Uh, it would help if we had uh, referees that were on the same page as us, but sometimes you can't win all those battles. Unfortunately, that's not one that we were going to win today. CSUN was defeated by Santa Barbara with a score of 1-0. to zero. For Mad Door Sports Network, I'm Diego Dragado. Men's V soccer team won, and here's Kelsey with more. Hey Matadors, I'm Kelsey Henderson and I covered the B team men's soccer team this Saturday. The game started off really slow. The Pepperdine's defense was really challenging CSUN's soccer team. Um, they were able to bounce back and CSUN's Chris Herrera scored the first goal in the first half. Passing the ball and focused more on dribbling, but towards the end of the game they picked it up with a score another goal in the first half, shot by Victor Smilligal. Second half started 2-0 CSUN and Pepperdine was able to score a goal against CSUN's goalie. In the end, CSUN won the game 3-1 against Pepperdine University. I was able to chat with CSUN's Chris Herrera, who shot two of their goals. Pretty much it was about resisting the whole second half. Thankfully, we came through, honestly. Um, it shows how connected we are as a team and how we could work at, with, in pressured times. And honestly, that was a big, big um, sign for us as a team today. Women's soccer had a tournament at UC Santa Barbara. 
Six CSUN starters were injured, so unfortunately they were swept. They lost against Cal Poly Slow, UC San Diego, and the University of San Diego. Now here's Alex with this week's updates. Women's rugby will be playing UC Santa Barbara here at home this Saturday. Roller hockey we've got a mess load of games against Sonoma State, Chico State, and UC Santa Cruz all on Saturday in a season open tournament in San Jose. And then you got men's ice hockey. He's going to be playing at Northern Arizona University this Saturday as well. Men's soccer A team will be playing against UCLA at 11 o'clock and B team will be playing against LMU at 1 o'clock both this Sunday. Women's soccer will be playing on Saturday against UCLA at 11 o'clock a.m. Water polo will be playing against UCLA Saturday at 1 o'clock and Sunday at 11 o'clock. Then table tennis will be playing at the SRC basketball courts. It's going to be a lot of fun. They'll be playing UCLA and UC Irvine the same day. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, and of course, our YouTube page. I'm Alex Aguilera signing off from me and the rest of us here at MSN. We'll see you next week.